Welcome back. The time now is 619 as the stay at home orders stretch on. The stress is starting to build in families. It was already there to begin with for so many, but now with homeschooling your own kids and working from home, trying to do your own job for so many people, it's really starting to add up. So joining us this morning, licensed marriage and family therapist, Holly Graham, co-owner of Virtual Therapy Live. She has some tips on how we can get through this time together. Holly, good morning. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Oh, thanks for having me back. So what are you seeing in families? I know what I'm seeing in my own home. What are you seeing? Sure, we're definitely seeing tensions rising, emotions are coming up from anger to stress to even sadness and fear. We're becoming a little bit of high pressure cookie cooker, cookers ourselves in our own homes. What we're seeing also is that the coping mechanisms that were working before just aren't working anymore. We're not able to distract ourselves with busyness or avoidance or run to work. So we're just kind of all sitting in this. So we're seeing parents that absolutely have this pressure on them to work more than one job. A lot of the times they're cleaning the house, doing all of the cooking, of course, but then they're also educating their kids and then trying to do work as well. So what we're seeing come up is this pressure to be able to get it all done. I had a mom yesterday say, hey, we're fighting tooth and nail to get our goals accomplished. And then the kids are shutting down. You're seeing non-compliance. You're seeing kids, of course, act out, but also that retreat. They're withdrawing. They're kind of getting quiet. We've got a lot of teenagers right now that are experiencing loss, but they're bored. They're sad and they don't have their support systems. At the far end of the scale too, we're seeing an increase in unhealthy, toxic uh, coping mechanisms such as um, abuse. Uh, we're seeing assault, domestic violence come up. Of, of course, people are utilizing unhealthy coping mechanisms such as alcohol and substance abuse as well. What can we do? Um, let's start specifically with, with helping the kids through their feelings with this time. Uh, and then we can talk about how to help our own selves. But what, what about those teenagers, especially who are feeling the effects because they are such social, uh, they're at such a social age, this is really detrimental to them. Sure, what we're seeing a lot of families do is start to step back from the to-do list and seeing them create more of a connection at home. We're seeing a lot of coping mechanisms used such as the daily check-ins. We, we do a lot of high point, low point in our house. I know right now there's not a lot of high points, but our rule is you, you always have them. So even if it's waffles was your high point of the day, but the low points, pay attention to the low points right now. When your kids are withdrawing to be able to talk to them, but also asking them about the emotions what we know about kids and teens, we do it as parents sometimes too. When there's gaps in our information, we fill them in with our imagination. So sometimes what they're imagination, imagining is far worse than what reality is. So we wanna be able to talk about that. We wanna be able to validate the emotion even when we can't validate the behavior. I don't like what you're doing, but I can say, hey, you seem like you're helpless. You seem like you're frustrated. You seem like you're ready to pull your hair out. So that's what kids wanna hear. They wanna hear every kid I talk to says my parents just don't understand. Mm -hmm. Kids kids feel it when parents disappear emotionally and definitely physically. So we've got some parents that are angry and putting the pressure on. We have some parents that with, are withdrawing and they're picking up their phones and they're not connected. And mm -hmm. kids are noticing that and, and they're hurt by that. Mm -hmm. And what are some better coping mechanisms for parents themselves instead of turning to a, a drink every night or something like that to release, relieve the stress? Absolutely, we're paying so much attention to what's going on around us, but we're not paying attention to ourselves. So self-assessment, we do a real simple scale from zero to 10, 10 being the worst, and we check in with what number we're at. We also break it down to honestly, green, yellow, red. Green, I'm doing well, yellow, not so not so well. Red, I'm into the toxic coping mechanisms. I'm, near, I'm nearing volatility or explosion. And we need to give ourselves permission to take a break. Mama timeouts are great. I'm, I'm modeling this for my kids as well. When I take a break to go to the bathroom, take a shower, go for a run, splash water in my face even, I'm able to take myself from that red down to that yellow, down to the green, and then return back. Also a second great coping mechanism that we're using when it comes to conflict management and volatility is the stepping away rule. As I, If I'm in an argument with my teenager, every time he says something, I'm gonna say something and take a step back. 
and then I'm going to take a step back. So I'm going to create distance between us, which is going to help prevent any increasing volatility and, of course, any physical altercation. So those are some coping mechanisms we're seeing because what we know is that what doesn't come out comes out somehow. So shouldn't we really learn a way to get this stuff out in a healthy way so that we can not injure our relationships but instead protect those connections. All right, Holly Graham, we are out of time, but thank you so much for your tips this morning. We appreciate it. Holly Graham with Virtual Therapy Live. Thanks so much. We appreciate it. We'll be right back.